Hello and welcome to the Striker Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. This is Charlotte Jones. I'm a homeschool coach and homeschooling mom of twin boys. I know it can feel really overwhelming to keep all the balls in the air all the time. So each week I chat about tips and strategies for being a happy and thriving working homeschool mom that you can implement in your life too. I also speak to awesome and inspiring women who manage to juggle homeschooling and work successfully and find out what their secrets are. Be sure to check out my time audit and mindset challenge in the show notes and sign up to my newsletter for lots of cool freebies. And if you ever need to chat, please book in a session with me. I'm so excited for you to be here and I hope you'll get so much value out of this episode. So let's get started. Are you looking for a new math curriculum? Well, I'm thrilled to introduce our favorite math curriculum to you. CTC Math specializes in providing online video tutorials that take a multi-sensory approach to learning. Favorably reviewed in Kathy Duffy's 102 Top Picks and the Old Schoolhouse Crew Review, the lessons are short and concise to help your children break down concepts and appreciate math in a whole new way. The lessons are taught the traditional way and not to a test. Each one of the video tutorials is taught by an internationally acclaimed teacher, Pat Murray, who is renowned for teaching math concepts in a simple, easy to understand way and in only a few minutes at a time. Using a multi-sensory approach means having the combination of effective graphics and animation synchronized with the voice of a friendly teacher together with a practical assessment. This three-pronged attack makes learning so much easier and more effective. Even students who struggled with math are getting fantastic results, and ones who were doing okay before are now doing brilliantly. Visit ctcmath.com today to start your free trial. CTC Maths is generously offering my listeners an amazing special. Go to www.ctcmath.com forward slash MLH to get a half price discount plus a bonus six months for free. That's C-T-C-M-A-T-H dot C-O-M forward slash M-L-H. Today, I'll be talking to Melissa Brander, who is a curriculum creator, homeschool coach, and the creator of Pocket Homeschool. Welcome to the podcast, Melissa. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today and chat with you. So before we get started, I just want to ask you a little bit of a warm-up question. So if you were to write your autobiography today, what would be the title and why? So... I had to think about this a little bit. And I think for me, if I was going to write my autobiography today, I would title it, I've learned that. I think one of my big um, sort of life views and life philosophies, you could call it, is that of lifelong learning, that even when you're an adult, your education doesn't stop and you should always come at things from a place of learning and of recognizing that there is never a point where you will know everything there is to know. So there's always more for you to learn in your life. But also it sort of reflects all of the ways that I've changed and grown as a person in my life and the lessons that I've learned that are um, deeply individual and personal too, um, interpersonal relationship lessons and everything like that. So I think I've learned that is what I would title my autobiography. And I think homeschooling is a big learning experience as well, isn't it? Yes, for sure. It's definitely changed a lot of the ways that I see learning in that when I was like, I was a very uh, bright kid and I always did well in school. But by the time I finished um, with college, I was so burnt out on learning. I had lost Uh, like all the joy that there was um, to be had in learning. So being able to come back later as an adult and realize that I always loved to learn things and that learning serves so well as you grow older. There are things that you can't understand when you're a kid. There's sometimes subjects and material that you approach when you're a kid and your brain isn't ready for it yet. So being able to come back to things later and to learn it anew and to learn all the weird and wonderful things about the world is really exciting. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And it's also given me an opportunity to really build that math foundation, which I think I missed out on at school. (laughs) Um, Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about yourself. So um, 
I'm born and raised mostly in the Midwest. Uh, I say mostly. Most of my life I've lived in the Midwest, except for when I uh, studied abroad in Wisconsin. If you're uh, listening to this and you've never been to the U.S., it's, it's in the middle, near the top, near Canada, and right on Lake Michigan, which is one of our great lakes. And it's a beautiful place um, of lots of nature, but also really interesting culture and things. And when I was a kid, I never thought I would live here my whole life, um, but I do. And so I um, grew up in a medium-ish sized town. And then I went to Milwaukee, which is um, the biggest city in Wisconsin for college. And I there I studied writing and political science. And after that, uh, I was pregnant in my last semester with my oldest. And so I transitioned into being a stay-at-home mom after I graduated from college. And then um, eventually we started homeschooling once my kids were more of school age. It just sort of kind of came out of everything we were already doing. And, and, um, and then we just never stopped. <laughs> and about two years ago, I started Pocket Homeschool. And that's been a really wonderful uh, experience, both to be able to connect with other people, um, to create and use that creative side of my brain, um, and to encourage. I also uh, love books. I've spent a lot of my life in the library, and I worked in libraries. I volunteered in libraries. Uh, basically, like my whole childhood was spent in a library. Not literally, but it felt like that sometimes. Um, and so... Uh, I've carried that passion for books and libraries into adulthood, and uh, I enjoy uh, spending time with my family and pursuing various creative outlets. And how long have you been a working homeschool mom specifically, and what made you choose to be one? So I have been running my business for about two years now, and I think it was sort of something that I was thinking about for a long time, um, but I sort of didn't feel like I was, it was something that I wanted a plan, right? I wanted a plan and I wanted to know exactly how everything would go. But what I've learned from starting is that like, you can have plans, but knowing exactly how everything will go in your business is just not a realistic goal because you don't know how the future is going to change and how it's going to unfold. And it really was the encouragement of some friends who saw something in me and um, said, you know, you would be good at this. And um, so I sort of took a leap of faith and it was, uh, it's been a wonderful leap of faith and I really enjoy doing it and working on it. And it's, it's been really nice um, for my brain and for myself to have that kind of area that I can work on and focus on. And so it wasn't necessarily something that I had planned out uh, because I was also content doing what I was doing and not working. But when opportunities came and I decided to just go for it, I discovered that it was something that I really loved and enjoyed doing and working on it and find it very fulfilling. I think there's also such a beautiful synergy between homeschooling and kind of working with things related to homeschool. I don't know if you also feel that, that they kind of work really naturally together. Yes, I feel like I, my kids teach me so much and working in the homeschool space, I really get an opportunity that I can, you know, see areas that uh, people might be struggling in or see things like this is a big thing in homeschooling and maybe nobody is talking about it. And I can now have the space and the opportunity to talk about it and start some of those conversations. And also just like my kids are my little testers. They love, they always want to know, like, what are you working on mom and asking me about it and saying like, Oh, that's really cool. Or one time I made a mistake uh, in a printable that I was working on and I accidentally left the answer key on the worksheet and my, my son uh, was doing the worksheet and he's like, mom, you left all the answers on here. <laughs> and so then I had to fix that. And so um, they, they also, they see me working on it and they know I work on it. And it's kind of a cool thing that they have the opportunity um, to witness that. And also my husband works from home now. And so they also get to see him working on stuff. And um, it's neat that they get to witness maybe parts of, 
of work life that kids might not normally get to witness. And that sort of teaches them too about different options and what different things are like out there. Absolutely. And it also kind of shows them what a good work work ethic is as well. I mean, there are all these other wonderful life skills that kids get to learn when they're homeschooled. Yes, for sure. I think it's it's been kind of, I didn't in, initially set out to um, like, I never consciously thought about including them in my work in a sense of like, um, when I finish stuff, I show it to them, but I didn't know that they would also be interested in seeing stuff while it, I'm still working on it and while it's still like messy and I'm still like figuring things out. But they're curious about what it looks like before it's all finished. And sometimes I'll be like uh, creating something and I'll be looking for an image to use and I will ask their opinion and say like, you know, what do you think about this picture or this picture? Because it's not a big thing for me to do to do that but to them it makes them feel really uh special that they're included and that they can have like opinions on something that's serious and seen as sort of more grown up so it's been kind of interesting that even though i never consciously thought about uh including them and a lot of i do behind the scenes like when they're asleep at bedtime so i can work a little bit uninterrupted but if i'm sometimes working on stuff during the middle of the day, they, they want to know, they're curious. And that curiosity, I hope will serve them in the long run. And that kind of brings me nicely to the next point. So you, uh, the next question, you said you kind of work at night. So what does your schedule look like, roughly in terms of what does a typical day look like for you? Oh, that's so hard for me to answer, because in a lot of ways, there is no typical day in my house, like um, homeschooling, our schedule, I feel like changes all the time. And so wha- when we are going places, like bleh, the whole schedule sort of gets like thrown out the window. But in the, for I would say for a typical day when we're home like this, um, like today when I'm recording this podcast, in the morning, we sort of have a slow start to our day. Everybody, you know, wakes up and gets breakfast and my kids like to read or play with Legos or whatever they want to do. And in that time, if I need to, I can be working on work stuff. Um, but I can also be just like taking a minute to wake up because sometimes it does take a minute for me to wake up, but everybody, um, seemed to be just much more, um, happy and harmonious with a slower start to our day. And then usually around, uh, 10, we get started on schoolwork. We use a loop schedule. So we have a lot of flexibility there and then we work. Uh, until lunchtime. And then we take a break for lunch. And then uh, in the afternoon, my kids work on some school stuff that they can do more independently that they don't need my help with. And so sometimes I'll work during that time. um, But other times, I'll take that time to like run errands and things like that, since my husband is home, um, working from home. uh, That helps me to get my errands and other all the various running around that is associated with like living life, like getting groceries and things like that. Because uh, sometimes, you know, you're working in your homeschooling, but you're also doing all those normal household tasks too, right? So sometimes in the afternoon, I'll catch up on housework and things like that. Then in the evening, we usually um, have dinner as a family. After dinner, we um, clean up the kitchen. We do um, a Bible study with our kids. We read Um, And then we take turns picking like a fun activity for the family uh, to do together. Sometimes it's a long one. Sometimes it's a short one. Then my kids go to bed and then I'm usually up for a couple of hours. I work out and then I get some work done um, and work on projects in the evening, usually often for my business. Um, And definitely the different whatever is going on, right? Depends on what I'll be working on for my business. Like on some nights I'm working on writing my newsletter and some nights I'm working on social media stuff and everything like that. What does your schedule look like throughout the year in terms of like, do you take breaks or do you homeschool year round? So we definitely homeschool year round. We found that it's what works best for us because we can sort of go at a slower, more relaxed pace and we can take breaks as we need to like we just got about a month ago came back from a big trip and we visited uh 
several national parks and national monuments site. We've visited Badlands National Park and Theodore Roosevelt National Park and Jewel Cave, which is a super huge cave system. It's like, the, I can't remember if it's the third largest in the world or in the U.S., um, but it's it's huge. And so sometimes around the holidays, we'll take a bigger break um, because my husband is um, from Canada, actually. So most of his family lives in Canada or lives elsewhere far, far from us. So sometimes we'll take a big extended break um, in like December, January, so we can go visit them. So for us, it's been better to do a year round schedule because then we can kind of take opportunities as they arise to take breaks or to travel. And uh, so not having to worry about fitting everything in in the school year and just being able to take the breaks when we need to take a break is has been really beneficial for our family. Sure, absolutely. And just like you said, just taking the pressure off every day, it makes such a huge difference, I think. Yes, for sure. Mm. I think sometimes as homeschool parents, and especially as like working homeschool parents, I think we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves to have like, uh, especially I think sometimes working in the homeschool sphere, you can kind of put that pressure on yourself to have like the idyllic homeschool life because you want to like sort of like walk the walk, right? You want to be sort of like, you want to know that what you, you are saying is also what you are doing. But I think that can come with this added pressure on putting like sort of that perfection in our homeschools. So I think it's important to recognize and realize that there is no such thing as that perfection. And to realize that you are doing a good job as a homeschool mom and as a working mom, and to realize that you don't have to be perfect to do that good job. Sure, I couldn't agree more with you. And how do you stay organized in terms of kind of fitting things in the day um, and just general organization? Obviously, as working homeschool moms, we have many, many, many things to do. How do you f- manage to fit everything into your into your day? Um, so uh, one, I have a lot of lists. I got a list, I feel like, for everything, right? Like I have homeschool lists for things that I'm thinking about doing in our homeschool, and I have like book lists for books I'm thinking about reading with my kids. And probably the best thing for me staying organized um, in my business is I created a spreadsheet. And in the spreadsheet, I sort of put like different pages for different things. Like in one page of the spreadsheet is like blog post ideas. And in there, whenever I have a blog post idea, I write it down as soon as I can. I have learned that like, the best thing I can do to be organized is not trust that my brain is going to remember it because there's so many things that my brain has to remember it. So as soon as I have an idea, I try to put it down in the spreadsheet. It doesn't mean that I'm going to do it for sure, but it means that the idea is there so that I can come back and look at it later and decide whether or not it's a good idea. And so like every tab of the spreadsheet is focused on a different area of my business and I can leave other important information in that spreadsheet, not just ideas, but like other things that are helpful, like remembering when certain bills come out um, and you can put the dates and stuff in there. So I have found that to be the best way that um, I could be organized is just to make sure that it's written down somewhere that I can refer back to it uh, because my brain is just so full working and homeschooling. It's, there's a lot up there. So just not trusting my brain to remember it is really helpful. And also I put a lot of stuff on my calendar. Uh, If there are deadlines for things, I put them in my calendar. If there are certain things that I need to get done by a certain date, I try to put them in my calendar. So then when I'm planning like activities with our co-op and stuff, I can see like, oh, this time is going to be a really busy one for me with work. So maybe I shouldn't plan as much uh, big excursions during that time. And I usually like we use a shared family calendar. And so not all my deadlines will I put on our shared family calendar because that would like clutter it up and be a lot. So I use like a separate calendar um, just for me that I can see that has my work uh, deadlines on it um, that is not is different from our family calendar. I think being organized as a working homeschool mom really takes a lot of the stress away. 
it's almost like one of the most important things to do when you get started, I think, is just to start getting some kind of organization because otherwise it can feel so chaotic. Yes, for sure. There can be so much that you have to remember. And so being organized um, keeps there less in your brain that you have to remember. And it takes away some of that like mental load of like thinking through everything or like another thing that I have in my spreadsheet is when I need to do something and it's something that I do off and I can like throw a little checklist in there for my spreadsheet. Like these are the steps to do it. So then I can like when I'm working on a blog post or whatever. And I think to myself, like, like no, I got to add the image and I got to make it friendly for Pinterest and everything like that. So I can like create these tiny checklists that are in my spreadsheet. So then I don't have to think like, oh, what are all the things that I need to do? I can just refer back to my checklist and just go down the list. And then I don't have to spend time thinking of something that I do all the time because it's right there in a list for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is that is a really, really good point. Because I think I know we all like to kind of block schedule and things like that. But I think the to do lists still have a very important place, I think, in organization. Yes. Definitely. And uh, what is your absolute favorite homeschooling resource and why? So I think this might be kind of cliche, but I told you before that I love libraries. So I think the library is my absolute favorite homeschooling resource because there you have access to so many books and it's not just the books. Um, most libraries do like a lot of programming too. So you have access to opportunities that you might not um, be able to pull off as easily in your home um, or they'll bring in people that you might not like uh, we don't have a bunch of animals at our home because I'm pretty allergic, but I have a kid who loves animals. So then when the library is doing a program and they're bringing and it's somebody who's bringing in a bunch of animals, that's a really good opportunity for us to go and learn more about animals and interact with them. And also, if you go to the library enough and you talk with the librarians, they'll start to know you and then they'll start to su suggest things for you and when you ask them questions you won't have to explain every time that you homeschool and they won't look at you funny because you'll just know you'll just have this relationship and they can be like a really great uh support for you and so i think sometimes a lot of people just don't always know everything that the library offers and so i think it can be a really great uh, resource that can sometimes be underutilized, especially uh, if your library charges fines and you're worried about racking up uh, fines, which I mean, it does happen. It happens to probably most of us. And it's, it's a really great resource, I think. And it's accessible to most people. There might not be a library where you live, but um, many communities have libraries. And a lot of times it's freely accessible or a very minimal fee. So I think it's a great resource. And if you are not uh, using it to its full potential, it's something to look into and think about, especially with all the internet resources that they have nowadays too, like access to some libraries have access to uh, language learning programs and all these other great resources that you might not be able to afford on your own. And uh, they're there as a help and support to you. And so I think that that's my favorite homeschool resource. Everything else I could change or switch up. But if I didn't have a library, I, I think our homeschooling would look fundamentally so different. No, absolutely. A lot of people have said, and I also agree, it's definitely our favorite homeschool resource as well. It's also like it's, it's but going there is also kind of an occasion. It's fun as well, though, isn't it? That's yes. the thing. It's like it's a nice time to socialize and to get out as well. Yeah, and we love the yes. library. And have there been times when you've wanted to quit homeschooling or being a home, working homeschool mom? And how did you get through, if you did, how did you get through those times? I think most people probably have times where they want to quit, right? Because there are always times where it feels like so hard and you don't know necessarily if you'll ever get over this hard spot. And I think that's where having other people to cheer and encourage you on can be a really helpful thing. Like I, so I have submitted a couple of times um, one of my products to a certain thing. Um, you know, there's several different kinds of homeschool collections and homeschool bundles and everything like that. I'm not going to name names or anything, <laughs> um, but I had submitted twice to the same one and been rejected both times. And that really stung. And it, 
And it, for a moment, I was like, well, what if, what if what I'm creating isn't any good? And what if uh, there's not a place for this? And then I just remembered and like, all the people who have uh, sent me messages or emailed me or said, this is a really neat resource, or this was perfect. And I sort of like, keep those in a folder on my computer, not just to use for future testimonials, but as like a thing to look at when I'm feeling like, is the work I'm doing even making a difference and even impacting anybody. And I think for homeschooling, I think, I think sometimes the hardest parts for me about homeschooling is not the teaching, but um, sometimes the relationship stuff uh, sometimes can be really hard. And so just remembering at the end of the day that I love my kids and knowing that we can figure it out. And there hasn't been anything that we have not yet figured out with time and patience and love. And so getting through things together. Sometimes it feels hard and overwhelming, but um, just taking a deep breath and um, also looking for the other people in your life, uh, like having a homeschool community can be helpful when you feel like quitting because they can give you some feedback about what if what you're experiencing is normal since we don't always have a lot of um, examples of like homeschooling in uh, popular culture and books and things like that, it can be hard to reflect on whether or not what you're seeing is just a normal part of, of homeschooling and a normal part of life. So being able to talk with others who also homeschool uh, can really help you uh, to, to understand uh, if the hard thing is uh, what kind of thing that everybody goes through or if it's like exceptionally hard and you should seek out further resources from um, a professional if something is really, uh, really off. So, and I think, uh, yeah, I would say most people have had tough periods. Also, I think in the beginning, because it's such an adjustment and it can be almost like a shock to the system, I think, when you, when you start, because you have maybe these visions of how it's going to be, and then it never ends up being like that. <laughs> yes. We always have expectations, right? Even when we try not to have expectations and we think to ourselves, oh, I don't have any expectations. We do. We do have expectations. And so sometimes just acknowledging that like this was my expectation and my experience did not meet the expectation. But that doesn't mean the experience was bad. It just means it was different. Sure, absolutely. And then what are kind of some things that you would do on a really tough homeschool day specifically? What are some of the activities or ways to get through a tough day? I think there are lots of different ways to get through a tough day. And it sort of depends on what your family needs in the moment. Like maybe what your family needs is to go outside, to go to a park or to hike a trail or something, something really physical and really active in the fresh air. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the weather is not always cooperating for that. And so... Um, sometimes playing a board game together or doing something funny uh, because, you know, I find that like a lot can be fixed by hearing my kids laugh, right? It's really hard to be in a grumpy mood when your kids are laughing, right? So doing something funny together, like my youngest loves um, the book with no pictures. And so if we're having a grumpy day, I know that I can read that to him and he's going to laugh and he's going to think it's hilarious. And it's really hard to stay grumpy when we're all laughing together. Sure, absolutely. And how important do you think mindset is for being a successful working homeschool mom? I would say it's pretty important because I think that if you are not, um, if you're not thinking about things in a positive in a positive way it's really hard um to move forward because uh there kind of are a lot of setbacks in homeschool in life in working um nothing goes perfectly all the time and so if you can't uh have that positive view that um uh, it will all work out in the long run it's really hard because especially when you're building and especially when you're new i think it's really easy to look at people who are really really successful and do what they do really well and think why is it not working for me like that i think 
you don't always understand uh, all the behind the scenes work that goes into it. And that even like overnight successes are not really overnight successes. We just don't see all the time that they put into it leading up to it. So I think recognizing that you're here for the long game and not for the short game is really uh, crucial in in being successful and continuing to move forward, even when things are hard and not as good. Sure. And comparison, like comparison, as is, I think the quote is, is the thief of joy, right? And I think that yes. is so very true. What does self-care look like for you? So I have to tell you, I was not exceptionally good at self-care until a couple of years ago. I think it took me a long time, I feel like um, the this sort of like culture that I was raised in, it wasn't a bad culture, but I had like a lot of the American ideas that like hard work is like work so hard and then one day eventually you die, right? Like it's just, you should be working hard all the time. And if you're not working hard, then what are you doing? Uh, and it wasn't until um, the last several years that I've been able to recognize that rest is a really crucial part of life and that we it's good to work hard but it's also equally good to rest and so what we have started doing um for almost a year now is uh one day a week in the afternoon I just leave and I just do whatever I want uh when I'm gone and that like just having that time and space and knowing that time and space is there um is really helpful to just know that like there is a break because the thing about um, homeschooling and working from home is that it can be very easy to just let that become your whole life. So I think having white space in your life to engage in things that bring you joy and that are not done for any particular purpose, they're not done to make money, they're not done as part of the homeschooling, they're just part of your life. And so having that white space and margin to explore hobbies and to explore things that bring you joy is for me a really crucial part of my self-care. Absolutely, yes. And I think I, my husband also works from home. I, it's actually such a blessing to have that though, isn't it? To have yes a, another caretaker or another parent at home. I think it really makes such a big difference as well. I feel quite grateful, yes. very grateful. <laughs> Yes, it was kind of, it came to us kind of unexpectedly, my husband working from home. Um, like, like many people around the world, his company transitioned to work from home uh, during at the beginning of COVID. And so it wasn't something that we ever really like expected. And then we discovered that we loved having him work from home. And so um, about a year and a half ago, he took a job that was going to be remote forever because we just loved the flexibility and the ability, uh, like, you know, if my kids work on something cool, they can go show him. He can take like a 20 second break and, and look at what they made or, or they can tell him about it. And so it's also nice in that regards, um, that he can feel a little more like included in what we're doing in our day to day. And also, yes, if, to be able to have flexibility to like schedule doctor's appointments during the middle of the day and things like that is a really is really nice because those things can be kind of tricky as a homeschool mom. Before he worked from home, it was always exceedingly tricky if I had a doctor's appointment to find someone who could watch my kids for like an hour or two in the middle of the day because there's not really uh, structures like that set up uh, for people who need a little bit of care but not uh, like a full-time care sure yes absolutely and I think I mean obviously COVID has been horrendous but I think that's one of the the best things that people have realized that you can work from home you can be involved in your family you can have not everything but you can have more of your life integrated which I really really think is fantastic yes I think so too and what do you think are the most important things when you start out with homeschooling? So if you think back to when you started, what do you wish somebody had told you um, when you when you started out first? I think that I wish somebody had told me that it's okay not to um, 
adhere to a method of homeschooling 100%. I think, you know, a lot of people will talk about finding your style, your homeschooling style. And I do think that's really important. But I think what has been more important for me and what has served our family better is to realize that you can pick and choose from all the different styles of homeschooling. And that's kind of the benefit of homeschooling is that you have so many options. And so sometimes we artificially limit our options by thinking we have to homeschool in a certain way for our kids to be successful, for us to have a good homeschool. But um, really, we can homeschool in so many different ways. And uh, like every kind of educational uh, school of thought to really and homeschooling, they all promise that theirs is the best, right? Like everyone, they're like, this is the best way to educate your kids. And I think realizing that you can educate your kids in lots of different ways and it it will be okay and you can have a successful, happy, thriving homeschool. And don't try and make your homeschool like anyone else's just because it looks like their kids are really happy and like they're doing really great things. If it's not the right fit for your kids, you're going to be miserable. So don't try and and get caught up in that, like somebody else is homeschooling this way. And it seems really amazing. So I should homeschool that way too. When your kids are not their kids, I think just realizing um, that we have such unique opportunities in homeschooling to um, be able to homeschool in any different way that we want to, that we should just, um, we shouldn't try to fit ourselves in a, in a box. Absolutely. Yes, that is so true. And then what about uh, being a working homeschool mom specifically? What, what is one piece of advice that you could give somebody who's thinking about working and homeschooling at the same time? I would say that you are going to feel pressure to do things in a certain way um, when you're working, but especially if you're running your own business and somebody who's working, they might not be running their own business. They might be working for someone else and have less flexibility. But uh, coming from my background where I can only really speak from running my own business and I can't really speak um, to what it's like working for somebody else when I'm at home, I would say that I would want them to remember that you can run your business in whatever way best suits you and your audience and the people that you're reaching and that, um, you know, you don't have to do like experts will tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this. And not all of those things are going to be the right fit for you and your business. So I think just remembering that, uh, you know, you're a unique person and in your uniqueness, um, take in advice and learn, but also realize which of those advice is not going to work for you. Like, for example, one of the very common advice that I feel like is given to working homeschool moms is that you should get up really early and do your work then. And uh, I've tried that. And every once in a while, I will do that. But it doesn't work for me most of the time to do that. It doesn't work for me to do that on a regular basis. So I found time to do my work at other times that fits my schedule. So just because someone is giving you advice and just because the advice works for them doesn't mean that the advice will work for you. I cannot get up at four o'clock in the morning. (laughs) I know. I know. In the same way. (laughs) There's a reason we have a slow start to our day. And it's because we are all happier when we don't just like hit the ground running from the second we're awake. Absolutely. No, I I mean, I admire people who can do that, but it's also definitely not for me. (laughs) Yes, for sure. All right. And finally, uh, are you working on anything at the moment you would like to share? And where can people find you online? Um, I'm working on so much that it's hard to know uh, what to share. But um, I am working on a big site redesign, which I can't say a lot about yet, but I'm hoping that it will clarify um, just more of who I am and what I believe is an educational philosophy. And I'm um, sort of in the beginning stages of sketching out a membership for homeschooling, encouraging and support. Um, so definitely, I hope in the future to have more info about that. But I'm just in like the barely, it's just 
thinking about it, just writing down all my ideas stage. So I'm not even close to the bringing it to fruition yet, but I hope in a couple of months um, that will be somewhere where I'm at. Um, people can find me on my website, pockethomeschool.com. That's pocket as in the kind of pockets that we all hope people will put on dresses. <laughs> and um, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, um, all of those places with the same handle. And one thing that I always suggest is that if you are new to me and you really want to get connected is to sign up for my newsletter. Um, usually I'm offering a freebie when you sign up for that newsletter, but also every Friday I send out a newsletter that I call five for Friday. And I send five things that you can use in your homeschool from book recommendations to video recommendations to um, curriculum and encouragement. And it's kind of a surprise every week what's in there, but it's a really great way to connect with me and also get some fun resources in the process. And I really enjoy writing that newsletter. It's probably in all of my business when I'm working on stuff. That is what I look forward to working on the most. It's my favorite to think about what am I going to put in this week's newsletter? What are the exciting thing that's going on? What's the new book that we've read that's really good that I want everybody else to know about and things like that. So I, I really suggest if you're new and you want to connect with me best, that newsletter is the best place to do it. Awesome. And obviously I will link all those things in the show notes. Thank you so very much. It's been fantastic to talk to you and thanks for sharing all your advice and um, all your experiences. It's been really, really great. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this and I hope everyone listening gets a lot out of this conversation. I'm absolutely sure they will. Thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Drop me a DM on Instagram or post on the Working Homeschool Mom support group over on Facebook and let me know what resonated the most with you. It would also be great if you could rate, review and subscribe or share the podcast with a working homeschool mom who might need it. It's my mission to support as many working homeschool moms as possible. Until next time, take care. Hello and welcome to the Strike a Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. This is Charlotte Jones. I'm a homeschool coach and homeschooling mom of twin boys. I know it can feel really overwhelming to